down as we lift him up. There is no other name, there is no other name, Jesus Christ our God. And the earth will shake and tremble before him, chains will break as heaven and earth sing, holy is the name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The earth will shake and tremble before him and chains will break as heaven and earth sing. Holy is the name, holy is the name of Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The earth will shake and tremble before him and chains will break as heaven and earth sing. Holy is the name, holy is the name of Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The earth will break and tremble before him and chains will break as heaven and earth sing. Holy is the name, holy is the name of Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Lift up our eyes, see the King has come, yes, light of the world reaching out for us. There is no other name, there is no other name, Jesus Christ our God. Oh, seated on high, the undefeated one, mountains bow down as we lift him up. There is no other name, there is no other name, Jesus Christ our God. Oh, lift up our eyes, see the King has come, light of the world reaching out for us. There is no other name, there is no other name, Jesus Christ our God. Oh, seated on high, the undefeated one. Mountains bow down as we lift him up. There is no other name, 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 Jesus Christ our Defeated 
Savior stands with me, a fighter for the weary. The Lamb of God, the Lion Hearted King, over every broken heart. Hope is rising through the dark. Over every weary soul, breathe me. But it won't prosper When the darkness falls It won't prevail Cause the God I serve Knows only how to triumph My God will never fail My God will never fail The weapon may be formed But it won't prosper when the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. My God will never fail. I'm gonna see. 
a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. There is power in the mighty name of Jesus. Every war he wages, he will win. I'm not backing down from any giant. I know how the story ends. I know how the story ends, yes. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. And every war he wages, he will win. I'm not backing down from any giant. I know how the story ends. Yes, I know how the story ends. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good Yes, you turn it for good Yeah, I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord Yeah, I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord, yeah. I'm gonna see a victory, I'm gonna see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord, yeah. I'm gonna see a victory, I'm gonna see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord, you take it. You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good, yeah You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good, yes You turn it for good You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good, yes, you turn it for good. I'm gonna see a victory, I'm gonna see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory, I'm gonna see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory, I'm gonna see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory, and I'm gonna see a victory, for the battle belongs to you,
Come, let us remember what our King has done. Let us remember His everlasting love. Let us remember He alone has overcome. Come, let us remember He rules His enemies. Let us remember share his victory let us remember we were slaves but now we're free we will sing through the night till the darkness breaks we will rise up and shout till the heavens shake majestic holiness glory and righteousness God will never change, let us remember. His kingdom will remain, let us remember. The power of His name. We will sing through the night till the darkness breaks. We will rise up and shout till the heavens shake. Majestic holy. Who is 
great is your goodness, how great is your kindness, how great is your mercy to me, how great are your wonders, how great is your power, how great is your favor to me. your faithfulness to me. Live here in your presence. Live to give you reverence. Celebrate your faithfulness to me. How great is your wisdom? How great is your freedom? How great is your passion? for me how great your redemption how great is your glory how great is the bloodshed for me and I'll sing of all your goodness all your loving kindness celebrate your faithfulness to me live here in your presence live to give you to me back to the top oh how great is your goodness how great is your kindness how great is your mercy to me how great are your wonders how great is your power how great is your favor to me your faithfulness to me. Live here in your presence. Live to give you reverence. Celebrate your faithfulness to me. How great is your wisdom? How great is your freedom? How great is your passion for me? How great your redemption, how great is your glory, how great is the bloodshed for me. And I'll sing of all your goodness, all your loving kindness, celebrate your faithfulness to me. I'll live here in your presence, live to give you reverence, celebrate your faithfulness to me. I'll sing of all your goodness, all your loving kindness. Celebrate your faithfulness to me. I'll live here in your presence, live to give you reverence. Celebrate your faithfulness to me. Oh, because you are faithful, God change and I celebrate your name celebrate your name because you are faithful God you will never change and I celebrate your name celebrate your name because you are faithful God you will never change and I celebrate your name celebrate your name because you are faithful God you will never change and I celebrate your name, celebrate your name. And I'll sing of all your goodness, all your loving kindness, celebrate your faithfulness to me. I'll live here in your presence, live to give you reverence, Celebrate your faithfulness to me. I'll sing of all your goodness, all your loving kindness. Celebrate your faithfulness to me. Live here in your presence. Live 
to give you reverence, celebrate your faithfulness to me. I'll sing of all your goodness, all your loving kindness, celebrate your faithfulness to me. I'll live here in your presence, live to give you reverence, and celebrate your faithfulness to me. spread out the skies over empty space said let there be light to a dark and formless world your life was born you spread out your arms over empty hearts said let there be light to a dark and hopeless world your son was born of how great you are. Now I has fully seen how beautiful the cross, and we have only heard the faintest whispers of how great you are. You made the world and saw that it was good. You sent your only son for Son, for you are good. You made 
made the world and saw that it was good. You sent your only son for you are good. You made the world and saw that it was good. You sent your only son for you are good. Over all the noise, let me hear your voice. Come and silence every lie inside my head. Would you fill the void with the loudest joy till the sound of heaven echoes in my chest? Over all the noise. Would you fill the void with the loudest joy till the sound of heaven echoes in my chest? The moment that you speak, the moment that you breathe, it changes everything at your whisper, my freedom in the sound. My heart will know the power of mountains moved in me at your whisper. To the growing fear, to the deepest doubt, there's a promise loud enough to drown them out. A melody, every note is peace, and I'm lost inside the beauty of the sound. I'm lost inside the beauty of the sound. The moment that you speak, the moment that you breathe, it changes everything. And your whisper. My freedom in the sound, my heart will know the power of mountains moved in me at your whisper. The moment that you speak, the moment that you breathe, it changes everything at your moved in me at your
never see it. If you say it, I'll believe that it is true. If you say it, I'll believe it. Long before I ever see it. If you say it, I'll believe that it is true. If you say it, I'll believe it. Long before I ever see it. If you say it, I'll believe that it is true. Yes, if you say it, I'll believe it. Long before I ever see it. If you say it, I'll believe that it is true. If you say it, I'll believe it. Long before I ever see it. If you say it, I'll believe that it is true. If you say it, I'll believe it. Long before I ever see it. If you say it, I'll believe that it is true. If you say it, I'll believe it. Long before I ever see it. If you say it, I'll believe that it is true. Are you past the point of weary? 
Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel that empty feeling? Cause shame's done all the stealing. And you're desperate for some healing. Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way where there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that he can't save. Let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong and his grace is free. The good news is I know that he can do for you what he's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus. And let my Jesus change your life. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Who can wipe away the tears from broken dreams and wasted years until the past to disappear? Yeah. Let me tell you about my Jesus. All the wrong turns that you would go and undo if you could can work it all for your good. Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way where there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that he can't save. Let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong and his grace is free. The good news is I know that he can do for you what he's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus. And let my Jesus change your life. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. 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 Who would take my cross to Calvary? Be the price for all my guilty. Who would care that much about me? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Who would take my cross to Calvary? Pay the price for all my guilty. Who would care that much about me? Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way where there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. There ain't no sinner that he can't save. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Yes, his love is strong and his grace is free. The good news is I know that he can do for you what he's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way where there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. There ain't no sinner that he can't save. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Yeah, his love is strong and his grace is free. The good news is I know that he can do for you what he's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus. And let my Jesus change your life. Keep up with people just dancing in the spirit here. <laughs> Hallelujah for your presence, my God. Woo! You're releasing heaven over us, oh God. May we learn how to receive it. Hey, Brian. Sometimes we're ready to receive from the Lord, and sometimes he surprises us. Sometimes he answers us when we didn't think he heard us. But what he started, he's going to finish in this city. The 
gates of hell shall not prevail. The dam is being broken open, and the soul shall flood in. And so, Jesus, we thank you for the power of your spirit. But it is the grace of God and the goodness of God. It's just who you are. So, Lord, I release again over some to restore what has already been poured into them that has been silent, it's been dormant. I release a prophetic gifting in those words that have not been fulfilled yet. May everybody know that Jesus is in a good mood. <laughs> Amen. And so, Lord, I just want more. I want more. There's so much more of you. So much more. And so, Lord, release your goodness over everyone here. And we thank you for it. And everyone said, amen. Good morning. Hallelujah. Good morning. Hallelujah. <laughs> May the young ones understand how the older ones can drink and drink and drink of the Spirit. Because we've been doing it a little bit longer. <laughs> Watch the chair. I, uh, Mr. Garrett, did that make sense? Oh, okay, so maybe that was from Jesus? Okay, just, just wondered. You hear that? I thought you had hay fever. <coughs> Hallelujah! I'm excited. Um, everybody feel refreshed after an extra hour? Oh, don't shake your head, Terry. You got an extra hour. So when did you come back? Oh, so yeah, you don't even know where you're at. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But if you got in at one, actually one, and then it's actually one again. Yeah. Yeah. Then three hours minus that, or plus that. So, hey, uh, praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to receive an offering, and um, God's doing awesome things. Um, we're going to have a little video here in a minute. Um, some of you will realize that you're going to be famous <laughs> when you went into the baptismal. We're going to have you on video, chosen. <laughs> yes. The whole world will see you get wet. And you too, Cassie. Amen. So why don't we stand and make proclamation. Amen. Most everybody likes that extra hour, but my clock tells me to get up at 4 to 5 in the morning. And uh, so the clock I had not changed, it said 4. But I knew in my heart it was 3. <laughs> and so I thought of Michaela. No. There's no way she's sleeping sound no matter what. <laughs> then I looked at the clock and it was 4.30 and it was only 3.30. So this is not one of my favorite days, okay, because my clock isn't going to change. Amen. You guys ready? Yes. I mean, God is doing some good stuff. Right When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. My God will never fail. I'm gonna 
gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, thank God I get, I get paid on time, right? A penny a minute, praise God. Um couple announcements. We pray on Tuesday, on Sunday night at 6 here. Uh, prayer moves the hand of God. Um, so you keep praying for the ones we prayed for, and there's many more. Uh, I forgot, but pray for uh, uh, Stacy's sister and, uh, who has COVID, and she lives in Willows, and she needs the touch of God, too. Okay. And so... Um, this is what I'm hearing, I think. As we see miracles and all of that, we don't slide, we fly after him. Okay. And so you know that we have now redone and renewed the Tuesday night service here at 6.30. And something happened on Tuesday night that was similar to some of you older people who have been here for a while. And so we were praying over someone, and then as I was explaining to Joy, and I did to Michaela, there's impartation moments where a man receives something and he imparts, according to Romans chapter 1, where Paul said, I can't wait to come and impart gifts to you. And then there's what is called a corporate impartation, where God just shows up <laughs> and falls on people. And that's what happened Tuesday night. So as we were praying over, I didn't, I forgot who we were praying over. It was over Amanda. And everybody was around her, and God just fell. And um, as Michaela said, she opened her eyes after a while, and everybody was laid out on the floor. And so it was almost like a Lord saying, okay, as you start Tuesday night back up, I want to do what I've been doing. So it's not meant just for some of the younger ones. It's meant for all of us. So I come at 6.30 and worship, come expectation, invite your friends. God is doing something deep in the spirit realm. Amen. And so I just want to encourage you with that. And then, um, okay, I'm talking to somebody, not you, okay. <laughs> I got something from the Lord I think he wants to release over some of you later something he worked in my heart today and um, so let's start the sermon I guess <laughs> heck I've been up for a couple days feels like but Jesus uh, we come with your word we thank you for your miracles we thank you for salvation. But it's your word that gives us a foundation to stand on. Without your word, we become lost and astray. So I do ask what has been prayed for many years here, that we have a, a word and deed revival where we see the signs and wonders, but it's based off the power of the word of God. I ask this in Christ's name. Amen. The title of today's message is called The Kiss. Okay? <clears throat> and it's, the passage is John 18, 2 through 9, and here's the scripture. And Judas, who betrayed him also, knew the place. For Jesus often met there with his disciples. And then Judas, having received a detachment of troops and officers from the chief priests, Pharisees, and came there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that would come upon him, went forward and said to them, Whom are you seeking? 
they answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus said to them, I am he. And Judas who betrayed him also stood with them. And now when he said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Then he asked them again, whom are you seeking? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. Therefore, if you seek me, let these go their way, that saying might be fulfilled, which is spoken of. Those whom you gave me, I have lost none. And the things we've been experiencing is because of what he chose to do that early morning hour. And there was betrayal. And there was a scripture that David writes in the Psalms about being betrayed by one who you go to the house of God with is the greatest pain. So imagine Peter and, and James and John are there. You guys remember? And what it must have been like to see Judas. Okay. Let me know when it's okay. All right. See, last week, somebody, somehow it got muted for the first half of the sermon. Okay. Somebody doesn't like things, but too bad. <laughs> Can you imagine looking at Peter, James, and John and the other eight when they saw Judas walk in with him? What must have been like for their hearts? Someone they've been with for three and a half years? Walk in with those to arrest him. See, sometimes we make the scripture and we just memorize it rather than living in it. Live in the moment of those who want to betray even in the house of God. It says that there are wolves in sheep clothing. But what did it do to, to them? Jesus knew. He, he saw it coming. He saw everything that was going to take place. But he stepped into his obedience at that moment. We, when we listen to a testimony this morning and the baptisms last week and the healings that have been taking place over the last five, six weeks, we would ask ourselves, why is it not expanding quicker? It's because people just can't believe that God is going to do the things he said he's going to do. So in the garden, he warned them, this is what's coming. But they didn't grip it. Well, we're living in a season and time in the world where things are coming that we don't want. Turmoil and death and the church is being persecuted overseas more than it ever has been. Every day, people believe in Jesus are dying. And we got to understand who we really are in him when we say we believe in him. He is a God of great grace. And I, I was on the way to Chico to go pray for Pastor Paul Wright Jr. and discussing scripture with Pastor Paul and, and how much God already knows everything that's coming and how much we don't trust that. Jesus saw it coming. He knew without a shadow of a doubt what was about to happen. He saw it. He was going to experience all that betrayal. But he was in full control. So when we prayed for Brian and Paul and Noah, we pray for Kippen, we look at these things as maybe being out of control, but they're not out of control with God. He saw all these things. He calls us to enter into his kingdom with him and, and stand with him and to fight for these things and these victories. It doesn't surprise him, but it surprises us. But he warns us, these things shall come, these things shall happen. 
but call upon me. Trust me. So what we take out of this passage is that Jesus was in full control, even though the enemy seemed to think he was in full control. So when the things we're praying for, the enemy might think that he's in full control over some of your issues. He ain't. We need to connect to God to find out what God says about these issues. We need to stand with him because, see, he's teaching us, okay, guys, it's coming. I've seen this coming. So when he looks at it in Matthew 26, he says, in the hour Jesus said to Moses, I have come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to take me. I sat daily with you, teaching in the temple. You did not seize me. But now all this was done that your might, scriptures might be fulfilled of the prophets, not be fulfilled them. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. He saw it all. This is coming. So when we really want to follow the book, nothing should be a total surprise. It says persecution will come. There will be people, because Joey's going to post that video, and they're going to doubt the people who got saved. They're going to say things. They're going to do things. They're going to come against it. But see, Jesus already knew that. He knows what you're going to face tomorrow. He knows what you need to have today so you can face tomorrow. One thing we don't understand is that when the Spirit of God comes upon us, sometimes we make it for the moment. We don't understand he's preparing for tomorrow or a week from now. He's preparing all the time, pouring into us to get us ready for what might be coming. But he already knows. Years ago, when I first got saved, he showed me that I walked down this road without him. And he would show me different places where he intersected me in a moment to draw me to salvation, which I didn't do. <coughs> Twelve years old. Never went to church. Got invited. Sat with my cousin. And what I know then was the Holy Spirit. And this man was preaching. Don't remember what it is. But I knew the presence came over me. I knew that I went front, but nobody prayed with me. I knew that when I went to Grandma's house, who was a believer, who was at odds with my dad because they warred over faith, never spoke a word to me when I'm standing. I'll never forget that giant sink Grandma's washing dishes in, and I'm telling her about my experience. She never looked at me because my dad and her were totally at odds because of what had happened between him and Grandpa and faith. And the Lord later said, don't ever speak to my kids about this faith because of his anger. So Grandma obeyed. But then I find out years later, Grandma told me, my aunt told me, Grandma's been praying for a preacher and so you're the one. So I can't wait to see Grandma in heaven to find out when I was standing there next to her at the sink what she was really thinking, what she really wanted to say. But see, that was my moment. God knew at that moment I could have gotten saved. Then happened at 21, a moment. Happened at 19, there was a moment. There was all these moments in my life. I was walking down this road, and all along, there was this other road. And if I'd stepped over at any time, everything would have changed. I shared a, long time, a, a week or so ago about someone who wanted to invite me to youth group who didn't do it when I was in high school. I probably wouldn't have went because I was too shy to go with a girl. And no one believes that, but it's true. <laughs> and what would have happened then? I always ask God, what would have happened then? If I'd gone and gotten saved then, at 17 or 16, would I have been freed up from everything I went and did until I was 33? Jesus foreknew it. He kept reaching over from this side going, come on over here. <laughs> come over here. And I kept walking by until he finally intersected me in my bedroom at 33. See, he was in full control of my life. I didn't want to admit it. He was in full control in the garden. And the disciples ran away. 
He warned them that this was going to happen. In 26, he said, now his betrayer had given them a sign. Whoever I kiss, you will seize that one immediately up with Jesus and said, greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. When I'm writing that and thinking that, I'm thinking of Psalm 2 where it tells us to kiss the son. But we're to kiss the son in obedience and love. And wasn't it like the devil to kiss the son in disobedience? Now think about this. Jesus was discerning. Remember in the passage, it says that Satan entered Judas. Who was kissing Jesus? Satan. Did he sucker him or what? <laughs> he sat there knowing it was coming. He spoke about one who was going to be betrayed. He spoke all these things. And then here comes Judas and Satan's in him, and he kisses Jesus. I wonder if Satan's saying, I got him. <laughs> but Jesus already knew. He was drawn in the rebellion to his most to take out Satan. I don't know. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but when people betray us, we usually aren't the best people in the world. So he's sitting there walking in this because he said in John 13, 1, now therefore the feast was Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come that he should depart from this world to the Father. He knew what was coming. He had warned them what was coming. See, he warns us all the time. He talks to us all the time about what's out there. And it just flies by. In 13.3, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given him all things in his hands, that he had come from God and was going to God. For he knew, in verse 11, who would betray him, therefore he said, you're all not clean. All of this in the garden was not a surprise to him. So everything he was doing was out of obedience to fulfill the word of God. He snookered the devil. Go ahead, kiss me. Go ahead. But when he died on that cross, which we'll get to, it was over. The kiss did not move Jesus. He didn't take the bait of being angry at Judas because the word was written, this is what will come. So when we look at this, these Roman soldiers with the Jewish came and he answers them this subject. Who are you? Who are you seeking? And I read all week different passages, different commentaries, and all kinds of stuff. And as I was discussing yesterday in the ride to Chico, nobody wants to answer this one part here. Then Jesus answered, Jesus of Nazareth said to them, I am he. And they fell to the ground. All of them don't want to touch it. If you read all these commentaries, well, it well maybe we don't. We, Judas just Satan just kissed him, and he said, "I am he." What was he saying? I'm the Messiah. I'm the magnificent one. I'm the one who sits with the Father. I am he. And they all fell back. In that moment, the Romans guys fell back. Judas and them fell back. We don't want to understand this majesty is what I'm understanding when I, I search and I cross-reference and I look. They don't want to talk about it. It's a charismatic moment. It matches what somebody said today. I don't understand. But it happened. <laughs> I don't understand. Man, I understand. It was the power of the living God in that moment, letting all creation know, I'm the one that made everything. I am he. 
And just speaking it, the power of Christ came and laid them all out. So I used to say, why did those guys keep doing what they were doing? Okay? Even then when the ear got cut off and he heals him, why did they keep doing what they were doing? I would have said, excuse me. I may be a Roman soldier, but I ain't touching this guy. I just saw an ear chopped off. He put his hand on it and restored an ear. That's bigger than any God I follow in Rome. But they didn't. What does it tell us about human nature? When I first got saved and was enamored with the power of God, had encounters with God, saw miracles of God, it was my firm belief if we had testimonies like we just had, we'd have revival. If we'd have a testimony of a food allergy healed, we'd have revival. Our mind cleared up, we'd have revival. And see, seven Eight years ago, God spoke that he was moving on from the city because all the healings took place and never moved the hearts of people. So there's a part of my heart is excited about some of you are being healed. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. But I'm not jumping in saying there's going to be a revival. You know why? Because we're human. And I've seen people, I've seen some of the Mayas miracles in this building. I remember one day, man sitting two chairs back, back row. Holy Spirit told me I'd just come back from a conference in Baltimore. And the Lord said, if this man shows up, I'm going to heal him. And he had 26 screws in his back and let rods down his back. So he's pretty stiff, you know what I'm saying? And he showed up. This is worship was over. And the Lord told me he was going to bend that metal in his body. So I said, stand up, young man. Don't anybody touch him. Holy Spirit, come. And then I said, now do something you can't do before. So he couldn't put his shoulders back. He couldn't bend a certain way. He's touching the floor. The power of God came. Now, I don't know how. I don't understand how that metal would bend. <laughs> but the Lord said he was going to do it. Never came back in the door. In my exuberance, I'm going, we got a revival. This has got to kick man in the butt here. We're going to go for this thing. So when I'm watching what's going on, I'm excited, I'm blessed. I'm blessed more about the time I'm having with Jesus by myself, but I know he's touching you, and I know that God already knows what he wants to do through you because he knew what was coming in the garden, and he knew every one of you what he wants to do in your life. Every one of you. It ain't up to pastors, it's the body of Christ. We're all needed in this revival moment. We're all needed, every one of you. But it comes down to, are you going to give the God of glory his glory and say yes no matter what? See, in the garden, it says they ran away. What? He just healed the guy's ear. He knew he was going to the cross. He, nothing was under suspicion in his mind. Well, what's going to happen next, Father? <laughs> he knew everything. The only difference is we know God is doing something, but we don't know everything. And guess what he calls us to have? Faith. So he gives us a miracle here, a miracle there, a moment here, a prophetic word there. So that you might step into faith. 
and begin to believe that anything is possible for those who believe. Oh, that's in the book. <laughs> and then the word of God begins to be what it's supposed to be, a guide to who he is that we would walk with the one who wrote it. So they're seeking this Jesus, and he says, I'm he. Boom. <laughs> so what happened on Tuesday night is I am showed up. And you couldn't, the picture I took, you couldn't get the full picture because they were, <laughs> here's Joey. <laughs> you know, he won't, but he was as red-faced as you could yeah. ever see. They're laid out everywhere. It was, I'm he. I didn't pray a prayer. He just showed up. It was a corporate impartation moment. We didn't do anything. It wasn't about us. It was a flare shooting up in the heavens saying, you want some action with me? You want I'm doing this to build your faith. I'm doing this so that you'll go after me more. So I was excited for those who were experiencing something they never experienced. I was blessed. But then I'm older than I was <laughs> seven, eight years ago. And I'm older than I was 15 years ago, I'm more experienced to not know only God better, but man better. So I know that what I want to happen might not happen. See, in Revelation 117, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. Then he laid his right hand on me saying, do not be afraid. I'm the first and the last. There was someone on Tuesday night. <laughs> Just like the scripture says. But you know what happens in America? Well, you know, is that really real? Well, I, I, I don't understand that. I am he. That's all you need to understand. <laughs> I am came in the room, and everything changes. I am comes to fill us with his presence that we might walk in faith. What the apostles were missing in the garden at that moment is he told them in 13, he told them in 14, he told them in 15. He keeps telling them over, this is what's coming, this is what's going to happen. He told them throughout the talk with the Gospels, I'm going to die, I'm going to be raised again. And they all don't get it. It's because we're inward looking and not heavenly looking. Everything Jesus was telling the apostles was in the word of God. It wasn't new. Everything he was telling them about having to suffer is in the word of God. They all knew Isaiah 53, but it never sunk in. Because, see, the enemy wants to come and blind you. He wants you to receive his kiss rather than the, you kiss the son. Now, think about that. Psalm 2, David writes, kiss the son. In submission. The devil comes and kisses us to get our attention away from Jesus. Just for a moment. It only takes a moment. But Jesus already knows every one of you what you're called to be. There's one road. There's another road. And so I called my accountability partners on Wednesday and let them know what happened on Tuesday. And from my experience, it was nothing of an impartation of a pastor. It was impartation of heaven. And Jesus came and touched them. 
And as a shepherd, I want to grab every one of them that were here and tie them up in a corral <laughs> kind of thing, you know. Put a, put a fence around of electricity, keep them safe, because I knew what was going to come to them. Doubt? Is it real? Any pain inside them is going to rise up? Persecution, maybe? Whatever's going to come, it's going to come. Always after something like that. But I didn't do it because it's not my job to put a fence around them. It's their job to understand that God something did something, and it's my job because I sat down with them afterwards and gave them a teaching moment like I'm doing to you. Okay, this is what happened. This is what you're going to experience. It isn't about this experience, it's about a relationship with a Savior. That's all it was about. It was to take you to an intimacy with him because I am wants to move in in a deeper way. So we all talk. Some of them probably don't remember the talk because <laughs> they were kind still with Jesus. And I'm telling you all this because I believe it's my job prophetically to give you the understanding what I see coming. A few weeks ago, someone made a comment to my wife that, wow, this is how it used to be, <laughs> the presence. See, I listen to these things to find out what God is saying. Here it is. It's a little here, a little there. So my question to you, what if he's ready to do it again? What if he's so full of grace for us? That when he did it in 13 and 14, and we walked by and didn't obey. If I didn't obey. If I didn't understand what to do or how to deal with it. So that was the first thing I said. Okay, God, I need to learn. Because my prayer has been, this town needs to see the real Jesus. This town needs to know that name and not have it drug under the carpet anymore by those who worship darkness. This town needs to have a glorification of your name. Not about this church, not about a pastor, but about Jesus being glorified. So I've been praying this for a while. And things started happening. Suddenly. Suddenly. So when... Maria sent me a message, and I won't read it to her because it wasn't filled with faith. Because <laughs> she said, Mike's up sweeping the kitchen floor. <laughs> I don't understand. My head is spinning. And so I didn't at first know, was it the sweeping moment or the fact he was walking around doing it? <laughs> and I figured it was both. Okay. So what was she saying? I don't understand. This is what man said. This is what we believe was going to be. Now, we don't know. I'm not going to say what in fullness has happened to him until we get a man say it. Okay? But I'm going to believe right now for what has been given him is an extension. Two months, two years, 20 years, I don't know. It's not my job. But if something is happening, but see, he, she was going, this doesn't make sense. <laughs> He's not supposed to sweep the floor for sure, but let alone be walking when he couldn't walk two days ago. <laughs> Jesus. And what I'm trying to teach you today, in the garden, Jesus knew everything that was coming. Our job is saying, Jesus, what's coming? He knows what's going to come next Tuesday. He knows what's going to happen the following Sunday. And he also knows what's going to happen tomorrow that's going to tell you don't believe. Because I am desires to glorify the Father.
So I was looking for places where people had encounters with God. And they were full of scripture, but in Daniel, as he was speaking with me, I was into a deep sleep with my face to the ground, but he touched me and I stood upright. Daniel 8, 18. In Daniel 10, suddenly a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees and the palm of my hands. If you follow those passages in number chapter 8, Jesus is talking to Gabriel and says, Gabriel, go touch that man. Okay? I know he's right over there. I can feel the back side of me. So what we see in Scripture, we will quote this verse. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But when he does the same he did yesterday, today, and forever, then we say, what does that really mean and why is he doing it? Because he's the same yesterday, today, <laughs> and forever. We don't grab hold of what he's saying. That's why the apostles missed it in the garden. He warned them. He had a long conversation, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 with them, and then they took off for the garden. I don't know about you, but they took communion, Passover with him. He's telling them everything. It went, pew, and it goes pew, over us. And it's my job to try to get it to land. Keep you focused. What's God saying? What God's doing? So my pastor is not as gentle to you as he is with me. So we're going to pray for his son, and he's not in the best mood because of where his son was and what we knew was could happen to him. But I had a tremendous time with Jesus Saturday morning. And so I'm giving him something I was getting from the Lord out of Isaiah. So he sharpened me this way, I sharpened me that way. And then he said, have you connected the dots yet? Doesn't it sound like him? Okay, does that sound like him? And I'm going, what dots? You know, is this paint by numbers? What's going on? I don't know. <laughs> so he gives me two dots about Tuesday night. He said, this is what Tuesday night meant. There's two dots. You know the third dot? <laughs> and I'm going down, drive. No, I don't know the dot. He goes, you should know the dot. I sound like him yet? Yeah. All right. You should know the dot. I go, what's the dot? He goes, you don't remember? No, I don't remember the dot. <laughs> <coughs> he said, I want them young ones who were on the floor to read a book. And I, I got the book here. He said, I think something's happening. Okay. But what's the dot? And I don't know why he can't remember his schedule. I don't know why he forgets to do certain things. But if anybody ever says anything to me, he never forgets it. It's a blessing. Sometimes. So he goes, don't you remember the dot? Connect them. He goes, okay. Outpouring, visions, and I'm waiting. <laughs> and then he told me, remember the grandson of this book prayed over you. And I go, I remember. What did he say? I don't know. Tell me. <laughs> I go, I remember what he said. You remember what you said to him? Yeah, I do. 
That's the dot. Now, he's a stubborn old man. I can say that. He is stubborn. Right, Katie? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he's got pit bull in him. Because you know what? It, unfortunately, I've, I've seen pit bulls fight. And when they lock on, they don't unlock. I mean, I've, you've got to hit them in baseball bats so they won't let go. So when he locks on to something, you might as well just wear it because he ain't going to let go until he shakes it out of you. And here's the dot for us. I'm at a conference. He invited me to go to, to hear a man by the name of Baker speak. His name is Rollin. And Zion Christian Ministries supports Rollin and Heidi Baker. Dot. And I'm up there, and someday I pray you get to meet Rollin. He's a different dude. He is born, he's an absolute tested genius. He was given a full ride in an engineering, either MIT, one of the big ones. He gave it up to be a missionary. He prayed over me a prayer. Because the pastor said, go get prayer. And I go, I'm okay. Go get prayer. He has a word for you. I'm okay, Pastor. You know, we're not leaving until you go get prayer. <laughs> and I said, but I'm driving. He goes, but we ain't leaving until you go get prayer. I believe he has something for you. <laughs> I don't mind getting prayer from people. I love it. But I'm one of those guys that don't believe you go up and just hound people for prayer because God can speak to you too. Okay, I'm not against it. So I went up there. And Rollin would make me look like a teetotaler when he gets drunk in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> okay? And so he's kind of like this. And I go up and whisper in his ear. I go, bless you, Rollin. I was privileged to minister in Mozambique with you and Heidi, blah, 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 for 17 days. I said, thank you for letting me minister with you. And he grabbed me, <laughs> hung on my neck, and wouldn't let go. And he said to me, I know God's going to give you what you're asking for. You better believe it. It's coming. I don't know how that deaf man named Paul heard that <laughs> three rows back, but he heard it. Because Rollin was doing it in my ear. But he heard it. So it was a dot. And this is the dot. This revival that ran in China because of his grandfather is still running today. If you've never read it, you need to read it. It's just a story of little orphan kids who met the power of the Holy Spirit. So, since I ask you to be transparent, so shall I. So I'm having my time with Jesus this morning since time changed. And I had an extra hour. And I asked about the dot. And he said, go back and look at the prophetic words I've given you. And they just happened to be right within arm's length. I pull them out. There's four of them on these plates. These people gave me prophetic words. Every one of them were the same. And they knew what Jesus said. Why do I speak to you when you won't receive what I say?
read them, he said. So I read them. You see, they were already coming back to my mind. So I had a choice. Go wake my wife up and use that as an excuse <laughs> not to repent. Or go out and feed the horse. Put more wood on the fire. You know, I'm talking to you who get busy when God wants to talk to us. We always can. Haven't you ever figured that out yet? As soon as he's ready to do something, your mind goes somewhere else. Every time. Maybe I'm the only guy. As soon as you know something's about to encounter, oh, I got to go feed that. I, I, I didn't get up. So I repented. It's a journey. See, when I come under the power of the Spirit, I'm not me. You don't really know me like my wife knows me. No one knows my insecurities and my fears but him. I'm being transparent. It's fun when you let your pastor think he gets these dynamic words, and, but the pastor has to carry them. And the first one was, just believe you're going to get what you promised. And it's probably 15 years old. So I repented. I did. Okay, God. And the only way you can do this is you have to be transparent with people. Because it's easy to do it in your closet. All right, God, you and I did business. Nobody else needs to know. So then the first person I told is someone I didn't want to tell <laughs> because she'd use it on me. But they encouraged you. You call it encouragement? <laughs> <laughs> Husbands call it something else. <laughs> it's encouragement. And all of a sudden, he touched me. <laughs> I mean, a fireball right over there. And he said, no more excuses. I said, what do you want me to know? Have confidence in what I say. So I'm worshiping, getting blitzed up here. It was so good. <laughs> His presence. And then he gave me a word for you guys. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> Donnie goes, I saw this coming. <laughs> and, and there's some of you in this room who have words spoken over you and given to you. And, and they just seem too impossible to believe. You know, like maybe someday you'll be a teacher. Of people. And, and the person said, no, no, it won't be. I don't do that. I don't speak in front of people. I don't do those things. And then, well, 10, 15 years later, pastor, you're right. I'm teaching a class for foster parents. And what he told me is there's many of you in this room have had words spoken over you, but that enemy's come and gave us a kiss. He didn't kiss you on the right side, kiss you on the left side to take your distraction away for that moment so you won't believe. I know the kiss. The kiss tells you what you can't be. It reminds you of what you've done wrong. It reminds you of what you can't be for the kingdom. And I'm not that person. It's got to be that person or that person or that person. It can't be me. Why would God say that to me? Oh, that word can't be for me. He said, I know what I want to do for them today. I want to fill this house with a glory that they can talk about and not own, but give away. I want to pour my spirit into all them who call this their home. I want them to walk in what I promised for this city 
through prophetic words, not just to your pastor, but some of you and others before us. And so why if God in his mercy, like in the garden, already knew? He already knew all of you before the foundation of the world. He already knew what he could make you to be if you get off of one side of the road and on the other side. But if even if you're on this side of the road and you keep looking at that road, you're going to get in a crash because you're not walking the path looking at God. So the enemy says, turn and look at the old. But there's grace. There is grace. There is grace. There is grace in a moment when God says, I haven't changed my plan. I'm just asking you to join me in it. So one breath, I'm praying, going, Lord, you're bringing miracles. Next breath, I got more people to pray for who are struggling with attacks. So he said, don't look at the attacks. Look at the miracles and believe what I will do for those under attacks. See, Paul Jr. and I have been praying together for revival for 15 years. And Pastor Mike, and Sr., And I'm saying, you can't let that boy go. You can't let him taste death. He's not going to either. I am is here because you're here. You're here is why I am is here. But some of you, when I walked over to two blondes <laughs> during worship, oh, I saw you as blondes. I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. And do you remember when I prayed over you? That God was going to renew what was once in your worship prophetically that has been taken away. How? We don't need to go there. But I believe it. It's time to receive grace. Because see, I know what he has spoken to her. <laughs> and she hasn't believed. you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you. So you must rejoice that God starts with the man of God to break him so he can give away out of the oil that's been broken. So you can receive the fullness of the promises that are meant for you, your families, and for the king. There's one secret right here. <coughs> this is not about your gifting. It's not about what you'll do. It's what you'll show who he is. The church has made it in their insecurity about who they are rather than who he is. And if we in this little church make it about who he is, we'll see the glory that's meant for us. If we make it about us, we'll never see it. He's coming again. Come on Tuesday. Come pray with me at 6. Come believe. Because, see, Jesus says, let me kiss you today. Let me kiss you. And his kiss will break the kiss of the enemy. The garden of Eden isn't what we want. 
It's the garden of heaven. And we've been going after Eden too. You guys aren't nervous, are you? Could, huh? Oh, why don't we stand first? First, it's about how he loves you. Second, it's the grace he wants to give you. Third, it's for his glory, not ours. So whatever you might receive today, it's for him to be lifted up. Amen? Amen? But that fire I prayed for is in the room. Even if you're tired and don't even know what time zone you're in. <laughs> I know that feeling. Nap will be good today. And God will let you nap. Okay? He will. Unless he catches you so much fire, all you have is a vision of heaven, and that won't be bad. So I'm going to pray. I'm going to ask you, to receive. I know that I've given many prophetic words to some of you. Okay? And if they're from God, then they're not mine, they're his. And maybe you haven't heard one. I don't know. And maybe you're believing, but you're not there yet. Or, man, it's sure hard getting there. And you just need a little push in the back of love. Okay? Amen. <laughs> that baby knows more about Jesus than we do. She does. <laughs> Holy Spirit, have your way with people. All of this is not about us. It's all about you. And I thank you, Lord, that iron sharpens iron and we're to sharpen each other and to love each other. And that's all Pastor was doing with me yesterday. And then you just brought me to repentance. I've seen many things that you've said, but the big ones I haven't. So I ask now, Lord, that you bring your presence over everyone in this room. And you begin to speak to their hearts. It's more important they hear from you than me. It's more important that they can receive grace today. Because I got grace today, I want to give it away. So I ask that the heavens would open and that we would have a corporate impartation. Not to go and brag about our church, but to brag about Jesus. May we step out of the competition of church and into the glorification of a king. And so Jesus releases your presence and release it with the love that you have for all of us. And what I'm hearing him say, will you drop your measuring stick? I quit measuring you the moment I made you. For I already know who I made and what you are.
Don't let the world define you. I've already defined you in me. Let me take the struggles, the attacks, the wrong kiss, and give you my kiss today. I ask this, Father, in the precious name of my Messiah, Yeshua, who is Lord, in your name, may your will be done. Now may the fire of heaven begin to fall. <laughs>